everyone, this is Dr. Salcedo, your conscious gynecologist. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to be talking about how a hysterectomy will actually not cure endometriosis. This is a really fun and exciting video. I'm going to talk about some considerations that maybe haven't been thought about before because endometriosis is a really difficult, debilitating chronic disease and it comes with so many um, concerns about how to treat it, so many ideas about how and medical, modern medical care is really helpful in terms of medical and surgical management. However, we're really truly not getting to the root of the problem and I really hope to share what those roots are in this video today. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and like it. Go ahead and share it with a friend. Maybe you know someone who ended up with a hysterectomy that didn't really feel a whole lot better. I would love to hear that story. So let's get to it. Endometriosis is a really common phenomenon. It actually affects one in 10 women in North America. And it is one of the most challenging and difficult gynecologic disorders to treat. And that's because there has been so many different theories about how it's come to be. One of the most important theories that we know about is called Samson's theory of retrograde menstruation. Now, what's that? Samson's theory indicates that when we are menstruating, when we're having our period as women, the menstrual fluid, the blood, not only comes out through the vagina, but it also comes out through the fallopian tubes. That um, dissemination of blood through the fallopian tubes will actually allow the blood to settle into the space between the rectum and the vagina. And that space is where a lot of people have a lot of discomfort when they have endometriosis pain. But the blood will go everywhere. It'll go around our intestines, it'll implant on the ovaries. And normally, when your body doesn't have a lot of chronic inflammation, it will be processed on its own, and then eventually your body will reabsorb the blood, and it's not a big deal. But women who have endometriosis, they manage that in a little different way. What ends up happening is intestinal inflammation. So our usually our smooth, um, our, our small intestine will receive a lot of inflammatory damage from some of the foods and um, exposures that might, we are consuming. That will actually damage the gut microbiome, which is the protective barrier of microbes that will help prevent against leakage of inflammation and uh, bacteria. Once the barrier has been disrupted, a lot of those inflammatory molecules actually leak down from our intestines and disperse into our pelvic cavity. And they allow that your, your immune system to process those inflammatory molecules, those proteins, those bacteria that shouldn't be there, and your immune system gets right to it. It's trying to clear it, it's trying to heal those um, peritoneal layers, those smooth layers that allow your intestines and your organs to, smooth, to smoothly and, to easy, and easily slip around each other. But when they are under repair, they actually cause like a sticky sensation, a sticky glue that causes adhesions between the, our organs. Then our blood migrates to those areas where um, there is a lot of repair happening. Then those that menstrual blood, because there's repair happening within the uh, pelvic cavity, actually creates a new blood supply between the menstrual debris, the menstrual fluid, and our peritoneal layer, those layers that allow our organs to slip around each other. As a result, those new blood supplies, that new menstrual fluid that actually has endometrial cells or cells of the lining of the uterus, those cells create those new blood supplies and become um, a, basically have a new implantation, a new organ, new menstrual organs all around our pelvic cavity. They also receive 
the same signals of follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, estrogen, progesterone, they respond just like the lining of the uterus in the lining of the uterus, but they respond in areas where they shouldn't be. So they bleed, they go through inflammation, they slough off, and the cycle continues. So what's the true um, solution to endometriosis? Well, we got to repair the gut. We have to look at the intestines as the true source of endometriosis inflammation. And there's plenty of data to, to support this. So that's why a lot of women with endometriosis have that bloating. They have this diarrhea or constipation during their menstrual cycle. They have this chronic bloating and pelvic pain that sometimes doesn't even seem related to our menstrual cycle. So then women will end up going seeking out gynecologic care, care from their primary care doctor, they receive birth control. And now it makes sense why birth control, estrogen and progesterone help stabilize that lining of the uterus, but it also stabilizes the lining that might have been ectopically placed or have been dispersed from that retrograde menstruation. And it stabilizes those cells as well. However, now if our gut is not repaired or if the focus has not been on the intestines to heal, eventually your body is going to not heal and those cells of the lining of the uterus that are all over your tummy are going to be able, are not going to improve with birth control. They're, it's not a curative um, medication and that's why endometriosis is so frustrating for so many doctors because we're not treating the source, we're not treating the true root of the problem. So then when ladies end up um, not um, being cured by the birth control pills or any other hormonal therapy, then usually surgical options are the next step. And then sometimes women will end up having a hysterectomy or they lose an ovary um, and some, something really an interventional will occur and oftentimes women will lose their uterus, they'll, use, they'll lose their ovaries because they've had such bad pelvic pain and they lose their ovaries through surgical menopause. They, the surgeon goes in there, the gynecologic surgeon will go in there and remove the ovaries to really help women through that pain. However, once that happens and a woman heals through her surgery, many women continue to have pelvic pain and many, many surgeons are confused and patients are confused and they don't really understand why they, women continue to have that pain and then women continue to suffer through endometriosis pain and they see many different doctors to try to help them. The reason is, is because we haven't addressed the gut microbiome, we haven't addressed the intestinal problem that got women there. So that's why really a hysterectomy a oophorectomy, removing the ovaries, is not the solution for many women. They continue to have problems. And so healing the gut microbiome, healing any of the exposures that cause um, problems with that protective intestinal barrier, they, it can be smoking, it can be chronic stress, it could be psychological trauma, all of those things are intimately related to the intestines, to the gut. And so without healing those things, women will continue to have problems. And so it's, that's why it's very important to understand endometriosis as not a female problem, but truly as an intestinal problem that manifests as a um, heavy menses, that manifests as painful periods, that manifests as bloating for women. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I know that really when I approach endometriosis in this way with patients, wow, they feel so much better. They feel so validated and heard. And so I really hope that maybe you might share this video with a friend. Go ahead and like it. Maybe you know someone who had a hysterectomy and they just didn't get better. I would love to hear these stories. And I just thank you for your time. And um, I hope to see you at our next video.